Good evening. Today's lecture is on Mrinal Pandey's short story, Girls. This particular short story is uh, prescribed for the first year UG students of uh, Manonmaniam Sundarnar University. First, I'll be talking about the author, Mrinal Pandey. Then, I'll uh, discuss the themes and finally, the plot structure of the story. Who is Mrinal Pandey? Mrinal Pandey is an Indian writer, short story writer, columnist, essayist, journalist and uh, television personality. She was born in 1946 in Tikamgarh in Madhya Pradesh. She is the daughter of the famous Hindi novelist Shivani. Her preliminary education was at Nainital. She did her masters from Allahabad University and uh, she also did a number of courses in English, Sanskrit, Visual Design and Arts uh, from the Corcoran School of uh, Art and Design, Washington, D.C. She is a very popular writer, thinker and uh, she continues to contribute to various online journals and websites. She was the first woman editor of a multi-edition newspaper, Hindustan, owned by the Hindustan Times Group and she is also the founder editor of the Indian Women Press Corps. Next, I will be discussing the themes that are dealt with by Mrinal Pandey in this story. The main theme of this story is gender discrimination. The second theme is the Indian expectation for the male heir. And the third theme of course is the burden that is placed on the woman to bear a male heir. The plot structure of the story. The narrator of the story is an eight-year-old girl. The story begins by describing the preparations being made for a railway journey to be undertaken by the narrator, her elder sister, her younger sister and her mother. They are going for the mother's fourth delivery to her nani or maternal grandmother's house. The narrator is not very happy about going to her nani's house. She loves to be at her own house with her father who is a very loving presence in her life. But the mother is pressurized by circumstances to go for the confinement to her mother's place. She is already burdened by the idea of travelling with three daughters, all the luggage and a surahi. A surahi is an earthen pot for carrying water. The three girls, their mother and all their assorted luggage arrive at the railway station. The narrator is a very spirited and active young girl. She manages to board the train and get a window seat and she proceeds to make a nuisance of herself throughout the journey. She does all this in order to attract the attention of her harried mother. But it only serves to irritate her mother further. Her mother keeps shouting at her and considers her to be a terrible nuisance. But the girl remains unaffected by all this. She scares her younger sister she has fun throughout the journey. When they arrive at their destination, they are welcomed by their mama or the maternal uncle. The journey from the railway station to Nani's house is also very interesting for the narrator. The narrator is not very happy in her Nani's house. All the women in the household privilege a young boy who happens to get the maximum attention from everyone in the family. All the girls in the family are constantly berated and asked to perform various tasks, while this young boy roams around like a young prince. As soon as they arrive at the home of Nani, this narrator is asked to bend in front of her Nani. She is told that she is a girl and she has to bend throughout her life. 
So she is being trained for the future when she will be burdened by society, family and all the other aspects that take over the life of a girl and a woman in Indian society. The narrator manages to retain her rebelliousness, her confidence, her uh, very active rebellion against her nani, mother and her masi's attitude. All the women in the family are constantly talking about the problems of being a woman. They are persistently trying to tell the young girls that life is a burden, life is full of pressure and this creates a negative impression of adult life in the mind of the young girl. The young girl is very curious. She always manages to be at the wrong place at the wrong time and she is constantly scolded and berated by everyone in the family. This does not in any way repress her attitude, her aggression or her bubbly nature. She is very curious. She proceeds to enjoy herself by telling a lot of horrible ghost stories to her cousins. And she also does the act of bringing in a dog, a street dog into the house. She shocks everyone with her questions. She is perpetually curious and she is bubbling over with questions and curiosity to which no one decides to give her answers. Everyone finds her to be a nuisance. One day, the day of the Chaitra Shukla Ashtami, a day when young girls below the age of 10 are worshipped as goddesses by the woman of the family arrives. On that particular day, all the young girls in the family are lovingly called by the grandmother for the puja. The narrator's grandmother calls her also, but the young girl decides to rebel. She asks them why do they treat her as a goddess on this particular day when they constantly ignore her and scold her or on all other days. The story concludes with these words by the young girl. The themes of the story. The story from beginning to end deals with the problem of gender discrimination. Throughout the story, we find that the little girl is constantly scolded and berated by everyone for being so curious, for being active and for being spirited. She is not happy in her nani's house. She wants to go back to her babu, that is her father. But she is forced to live in this nani's house with her mother and her siblings. The only positive presence in her life in the nani's house is her elder sister Lakshmi. Lakshmi has already been trained to be the perfect, quiet, sensible, obedient young girl. But the narrator, the middle daughter in the family, refuses to succumb to the situation. She refuses to become a passive, obedient listener. She refuses to suppress her native instincts. Indian society gives a lot of importance to the male heir or the son. <clears throat> Sons are supposed to carry on the honor and the name of the family. And this puts an unnecessary and undue pressure on the young mother in this particular story. She already has three daughters. She has been through three deliveries, one after the other. She is a very tired woman. Physically and mentally, she is harassed by the pressure that is put on her by society and her family to deliver a boy. She hopes that this time at least she would have a son and so she would be free from this process of repeated pregnancies. The young mother in this family continues to be pressurized by society and she cannot pay any attention to her three daughters. Her middle daughter, the eight-year-old narrator of this story, constantly strives for her attention. She yearns for her mother's love. There are instances in the story when she yearns to sit on her mother's lap and she is shooed away by her mother. When she tries to sit on her nani's lap, even then the reaction, the response is the same. 
the only one who has the privilege to sit on the grandmother's lap is the young grandson. Thus, this story deals with the problem of gender discrimination, the pressure that is put on the mother to bear a male heir and the psychological trauma, the stress that is suffered by the young girl is depicted in great detail. Thank you.